Good morning and welcome to Ignite. I want to start by saying a big thank you. In this unprecedented, complicated, and very hard year, you have helped the world overcome the most unimaginable constraints. Your hard work combined with today's digital technology is helping fuel our global economy and society in one of its greatest moments of needs. So thank you. Without that tenacity, resilience, and the work each of you as IT professionals, developers, system administrators, data analysts, and professionals across every function, I even shudder to think where we would be but for your work. So I'm deeply, deeply grateful and thank you. The past year has brought the most significant change in our society and economy in modern history. And the cloud has been key to helping the world not only adapt, but innovate. We have witnessed a second wave of digital transformation sweeping every company in every industry, from healthcare to digital twins in manufacturing, to remote work and learning across organizations in every industry. We are accelerating their digital initiatives to build resilience and transform. The true test of technology has always been whether it can help organizations improve their time to value, increase agility, and reduce costs. But as the world recovers, it will require much more from technology and the cloud in particular to help address our most pressing challenges and ensure that nobody is left behind. Over a decade ago, we declared we were all in on the cloud because we understood its transformational promise and the opportunity it would create for every organization. And today, it's time for us to reflect on how the cloud will change over the next decade and the innovation our changing world will require from the cloud. We will need to foundationally transform how cloud can drive the next level of broad economic growth that everyone can participate in. To accomplish this, there are five key attributes that will drive this next generation of innovation in the cloud. First, ubiquitous and decentralized computing. Every organization, small or large, in every industry, in every country will require more ubiquitous and more decentralized compute power. We're going through a radical change in computing architecture from the materials to semiconductors to the systems from the cloud to its edge. The result of all this will be continued exponential growth in compute capacity. However, we are at peak centralization right now. As computing becomes embedded everywhere in our world, transforming how we interact with people, places, and things, and as physical and digital worlds converge, we will require more sovereignty and decentralized control. Cloud and edge computing will evolve to meet all of these real world needs. Second, sovereign data and ambient intelligence. The volume, variety, and velocity of data will go through explosive growth in the cloud and in particularly at the edge, driving that decentralized architecture of compute I just talked about. In this world, data will be more private, more sovereign. Data governance and provenance will take on new importance. Large-scale, multimodal models will become first-class platforms onto themselves, creating that ambient intelligence all around us. We will develop new methods of federated machine learning to drive the next generation of personalized and yet privacy-preserving services. Business logic will move from being code that is written to being code that is learned from data, creating a complete new generation of business process and productivity systems. We will also see this new software tool approach being foundational to tackling these massive unsolved challenges from personalized medicine to carbon recapture. In the AI we create, using all this enormous power of the cloud, we will look for increasing levels of predictive and analytical power, common sense reasoning, alignment with human preferences, and perhaps most importantly, augmenting human capability. Third, Empowered creators and communities everywhere. Our economy will find a new balance between consumption and creation. 
In the last decade, we saw several tech advances that drove more consumption from browsing, more shopping, more binge watching. And behind all of this is creation. We believe the next decade will require technology advances that radically democratize creation. We will need to expand access to skills, tools, and platforms, as well as connections and collaboration across communities so that everyone can create. Whether it's building a virtual world, students working on an assignment with short form videos, knowledge workers creating formulas in spreadsheets, pro developers writing code, or domain experts using low code tools to build applications. This democratization of creation will drive new innovation in end user computing. Form and function of our devices will be reimagined across the stack from silicon to the operating system to the experiences themselves. And these computing experiences will be further amplified by communities that learn from each other, build on each other, and further amplify and accelerate creation. Fourth, expanded economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. We need to create these continuous feedback loops between the work, skills, learning, and credentials required, both for the jobs of today and tomorrow. We need to define productivity much more broadly, inclusive of collaboration, learning, and well-being to drive career advancement for every worker, including frontline and knowledge workers, as well as for new graduates and those who are in the workforce today. All this needs to be done with flexibility in when, where, and how people work. Fifth, trust by design. Fundamentally, a technology provider should succeed only when it helps the world around it succeed. No one wants to build technology that rapidly scales but breaks the world around us. And no customer wants to be dependent on a provider that sells them technology on one end and competes with them on the other. We need to have ethical principles govern the design, development, and deployment of AI. Our technology needs to be secure by design and promote zero trust architectural principles. We need to build technology with the design intent to protect the fundamental rights of all people, including privacy, and strengthening these institutions we all depend on for our livelihoods and well being. And we need tech advancements that protect our most finite resource, our planet. Every organization, will need to harness these five attributes to build their own digital tech intensity so they can create proprietary technology required to generate durable competitive advantage. They will need not only to adopt technology, but build their own technology. These cloud advances are what will enable every organization in every sector to create that broad economic surplus in every community in every country. A cloud that helps small businesses become more productive, multinationals more competitive, nonprofits more effective, and governments more efficient. That improves healthcare and educational outcomes, amplifies human ingenuity, and allows people everywhere to reach higher. This is what the Microsoft Cloud delivers, and it underlies everything we will show you this week. The Microsoft Cloud is built to accelerate your transformation today and going forward. There is no better example of this than the rapid changes we have seen over the past year in how people use technology to communicate, to collaborate, and create. For those of us who have had the privilege of working from home, digital technology has made it possible. And for those who need to be at the workplace, including the many essential frontline workers, technology has helped them keep our society and economy functioning in the midst of this pandemic. As the world recovers, there's no going back. Employee expectations are changing and flexibility will be key. And that's why we are building Microsoft Teams as an organizing layer for all the ways we work, the modes of communication, collaboration, and the ability to extend it with other apps and services. With Teams, we are ensuring that people can collaborate inside and outside the organization, that they can learn in the context of their work, and that they can retain and build new social capital. And we are empowering both frontline and knowledge workers to work together in new ways. We want to ensure everyone can be seen and be heard and fully participate, whether they are at home, in a meeting room, at the office, or at the factory floor.
For example, just imagine joining a meeting remotely and being able to see everyone in the room as though you were seated at the conference table with them. Imagine if you were able to draw on the same whiteboard together. And imagine if you're always able to identify who's speaking while maintaining eye contact. That's some of what you will see today when we talk about what's coming next for Microsoft 365 and Teams. We'll also see the digital and physical worlds come together with mixed reality to help people stay connected when they are apart. A year ago, we shipped HoloLens 2. It's been amazing to see the ingenuity of people and businesses everywhere applying this technology to transcend space and address complex challenges in their industries. Take Dr. Michael Marin, a vascular surgeon at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. A world away in eastern Uganda, communities haven't had access to advanced medical care. But now using HoloLens 2, along with Dynamics 365 Remote Assist and Teams, Dr. Marin is able to coach a surgeon doing a complex procedure 7,000 miles away in real time, expanding access to specialized knowledge and resources and overcoming disparities in care. We've also seen frontline workers around the world using mixed reality to learn new skills, advance their careers, and drive productivity gains. At Kruger Paper Mill in Montreal, employees have used HoloLens 2 and Dynamics 365 guides to learn on the job. The impact has been transformational. Donald Susi, who worked at the mill for 30 years, has been able to capture all of the long-standing workplace wisdom and institutional knowledge and pass it on to new colleagues, accelerating the onboarding process and helping them take on complex tasks faster than ever. And because information is delivered holographically right where the work happens, Kruger has been able to improve employee safety and avoid production slowdowns. These examples are just the beginning of what's possible when you connect the bits we build with the atoms of the real world. Today, we are thrilled to take that next step announcing a new mixed reality platform, Microsoft Mesh. Think about what Xbox Live did for gaming. We went from single player to multiplayer, creating communities that help people connect and achieve together. Now just imagine if the same thing happened with mixed reality. Mesh enables you to interact holographically with others with true presence in a natural way. For example, I can join a birthday celebration with my extended family in India, interacting as if we were physically together without any screens between us. Or I can meet my colleagues on the other side of the world, collaborating as though we were in the same room. Again, with no screen mediating our interactions. It's pretty mind boggling to imagine, but this is the future we are building. One of my favorite lines we used to describe the possibilities when we first introduced HoloLens was, when you change the way you see the world, you change the world you see. I can't wait to see the world we create together. And now let me turn it over to Alex Kipman to start us off. Thank you all very much and have a fantastic Ignite. Tomorrow stands a chance to be even better than today. Thanks to one thing. When you fall under its spell, even though words may elude you, you'll race to the rooftops to share it. It's a force that draws us to each other, a glue that holds us together, a siren that beckons others to join us. It's a feeling that's eternally optimistic and forever inquisitive, asking, what if, why not, and how soon? It beckons us to explore and to break new ground. It gives us depth and breadth understanding. It helps us see perspectives outside of our own. It's the indestructible sense of wonder inside each of us. And with it, 
the aspiration to share a world far greater than ourselves. A dream you dream alone is only a dream. A dream we dream together is called reality. When you have a dream, chances are there's someone else right over there, and there, and there, who share the same dream, but each of us dreaming it just a little bit differently. The process of collaborating with others is how we discover the little different bits, the excitement and the energy, the diverse skills and viewpoints that bring everyone together. When we share in a dream, everyone can be equally excited, equally motivated, and perhaps even equally consumed by the shared dream. But we tend to think of reality and dreaming as separate, but are they really? Today is about showing how we can help transport dreams from here to there, out into the world without compromise exactly as they were imagined. And when they are there, we can share them with others to explore and communicate, to mold and collaborate, to enjoy together. This is a new way to dream in a new type of computing, one that makes dreams a shared reality. And to accelerate this collaborative computing future, I am proud to welcome all of you to Microsoft Mesh. Today, you and I make history as we collaborate on the largest mixed reality show ever created. Microsoft Mesh connects the physical and the digital worlds, allowing us to transcend the traditional boundaries of space and time. Microsoft Mesh is powered by Azure and all of its AI and compute capabilities, working seamlessly together from the intelligent edge to the intelligent cloud. It promises to take us to brand new frontiers by enabling developers to create rich and immersive experiences. Experiences that let us, one, connect from anywhere, all of us, sharing every moment and every hologram across augmented reality, virtual reality, and even traditional 2D devices. Two, Microsoft Mesh will give us agency from avatars to holoportations, letting us feel true presence in mixed reality. And lastly, Microsoft Mesh will let us experience mixed reality together in instinctual and collaborative ways. Microsoft Mesh is integrated with the Microsoft Cloud, so workflows naturally transition from the familiar 2D mediums to the world of mixed reality. Which, by the way, brings me to this amazing underwater scene. Thank you, by the way, for creating this incredible and inspiring underwater world. I mean, look at it. It's wow. Did you have fun doing it? As your host, I cannot express how energizing it is to see each of you expressing all of your emotions with holograms. Microsoft Mesh will empower you and your businesses to learn, to play, to work together naturally, no matter the task, no matter the location. Let's take a look. Connection is a spark that gives our lives meaning. It drives us to seek out others who feel the same way. Okay, why don't you input the data and we'll take a look together. Hey, Mari, what you got for me? To find those who share our views, yet offer different perspectives. Saw this net. 
Look over here. Challenge us with new ways of seeing. Deepen our understanding. And enrich our lives. Great things happen when we commit to something bigger than ourselves. Let's take a closer look at it. Place this here. Let's see how we go from there, okay? This sense of collaboration and the feelings of connection it brings excites us. Hey, just in time. I'm going to move it slightly, okay? It's yours, take it. We have two planes right now on the same trajectory. As we put people first, technology fades into the background and feels like anything but. Aisha, what do you think? I think if we head 330, maintaining 2800, we'll be clear for approach. Excellent. This changes the way we see the world, and in turn, changes the world we see. These numbers are looking great, actually. There's promise in the possibilities, and what we see and create next will stretch the imagination. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Slowly coming towards the thumb. A world without boundaries. Good job. A lot better than yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Slowly bring the A world where technology enhances, not limits, humanity. With people front, center, and in the spotlight. The future is here. And here can be anywhere. Introducing Microsoft Mesh. Envision a world where Mesh-enabled applications from our partners and from Microsoft fuel this generation's collaborative computing needs. Envision a Mesh-enabled Microsoft Teams where colleagues from around the globe can collaborate as if they're physically there. And in a world of hybrid work where here can literally be anywhere and headquarters are no longer tied to a single physical location, Mesh will allow organizations to host mixed reality gatherings with everyone in the same room. Envision a Mesh-enabled Dynamics 365. People will be able to learn together from anywhere, sharing the common perspectives so critical when learning complex topics. Envision frontline workers and how they will have access to remote experts everywhere they're needed, sharing insights quickly and effectively, ultimately keep, keeping people safer and resolving issues faster. Microsoft Mesh builds upon our mixed reality services, which have seen incredible developer adoption. And today, I am really excited to announce the public preview of Azure Object Anchors and general availability of Azure Remote Rendering. To all of our supporters, partners, and fans around the world, thank you. We started this journey together, and it's because of you, your great feedback, and your enthusiasm that we are experiencing such great mixed reality momentum. Today, in manufacturing, retail, and healthcare, over 90% of companies with more than 500 employees are currently using or prototyping with mixed reality. And half of the Fortune 500 companies have now purchased HoloLens 2. Leading brands such as Mercedes, Intel, Airbus, and L'Oreal have deployed at scale HoloLens 2 powered solutions. Across industries, the numbers speak for themselves. Take Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin has reduced their touch labor by 90%. What used to take an eight hour shift to complete can now be done error free in 45 minutes. Take Toyota. Toyota has embraced HoloLens, Dynamics 365 Remote Assist, and our mixed reality services to improve maintenance efficiency and to differentiate on customer service. Their most recent mixed reality solution enables technicians to intuitively access via Azure object anchors, wiring and structure information of specific car models while working on the actual vehicle. As a result, this is reducing the time spent doing inspections by as much 
as 20%. A significant return on investment, which has them rolling out this HoloLens 2 solution to all of their dealerships across Japan. Take Bentley Systems as another example. Bentley Systems is a global leader in software for architecture, engineering, and construction. And they're using HoloLens 2 and our mixed reality services to improve bridge inspections. In the United States alone, there are more than 600,000 bridges, a key part of the infrastructure that keeps our country running. Using drones to capture high resolution images, Bentley can create precise digital twins for the bridge. Now, because details matter when doing inspections, Bentley is using Azure Remote Rendering to enable real-time, high-fidelity renderings, allowing multiple experts to view large sections of the bridge all at the same time. Leveraging this Bentley solution on a HoloLens device, inspectors at Collins Engineers can visualize sections of the bridge. They can add spatial notes, annotations, dimensions, or other markings to provide detailed contextual information for the structure. And in the process, they can save 40% of labor costs for each inspection they make. And local and state government agencies can follow in the footsteps of the Minnesota Department of Transportation who is working with Collins engineers to save an estimated $4 million per year, savings that can be repurposed to fix even more of their aging infrastructure. And when mesh enabled, all of these solutions can now be transformed from solitary to collaborative mixed reality experiences. Mixed reality experiences where you have the freedom to use the device of your choice because Mesh will work on HoloLens 2, Windows Virtual Reality headsets, Oculus headsets, PCs, Macs, and even smartphones. Take Accenture as an example. They are experimenting with hybrid workflows that increase accessibility, champion remote collaboration, and encourage sustainability by minimizing unnecessary travel. With a mesh-enabled alt space, Accenture is evolving their employee experience by creating a headquarters. They call it the nth floor. Now, this is available for everyone, for onboarding, learning, and the type of human connection we are all missing right now. With alt space, everyone knows the nth floor is just a tap away. But what happens when you go beyond the enterprise? Collaboration doesn't just take place in enterprise settings. Sometimes we just call it hanging out with friends. With Microsoft Mesh, you can connect from any device on any platform, transforming the way we connect to one another, enabling hanging out wherever your friends are. And when here can be anywhere, the entire planet becomes your playground. Many companies are exploring and experimenting with this notion of experiencing mixed reality together. But I think we can all agree that there is one company that stands out with its real-world AR experiences. I have been a huge fan of Niantic for a very long time. I just love their ambition to build planet-scale AR experiences, experiences that connect people from all over the world. And to share more about their vision, please welcome CEO and founder of Niantic, John Hankey. Thanks, Alex. I'm thrilled to be here and to hear all about the latest innovations in AI and mixed reality. We share a common aspiration to use technology to bridge the digital world with the physical one. From the very beginning, our work at Niantic has been designed to inspire people to get outside, play, and explore together. Underpinning this mission is our ongoing effort to create the tools and technology to connect the real world, the atoms, and the digital one, the bits, to create magical experiences. Our games have already encouraged hundreds of millions of people to explore the world together 
In fact, most people's first AR experience was probably Pokemon Go. Since launching in 2016, we've seen massive numbers of people around the world connect through the game, ranging from families exploring their neighborhood to tens of thousands gathering at our events to play and celebrate together. We're incredibly motivated by the stories we hear from Niantic explorers about how a game has helped them feel happier, healthier, and better connected to one another and to their local communities. This gives us reason to feel optimistic that technology, and AR in particular, can be channeled to make a positive impact on the world. As exciting as this journey's been, we're even more excited about the next phase, as we think about bringing these experiences to future generations of AR hardware. And that brings us to why we're here today. We share a common vision with Microsoft for creating real social connections in a digitally enhanced world. We're excited to be collaborating with Microsoft in this area to move the industry forward. That's right, John. By mirroring our industry-leading HoloLens devices and our new mesh capabilities, with Niantic's market-leading applications, we can give people entirely new ways to interact with each other and the world. We've already started working on what this might look like, and we're excited to show a proof-of-concept demo of Pokemon Go on HoloLens. This is not intended for consumer use yet, but it gives you a glimpse into the amazing possibilities when we combine advanced AR with exploration and social gameplay in the real world. Thanks, Alex. I'm here in the gardens at Lake Merritt. This is so great. It's like I'm actually here, John. Welcome. This is amazing, and it's what I'm so excited about. Enabling friends to play and explore the world together, no matter where they are. I'm going to have a look around. I'm excited to join you in this adventure. There are quite a few Pokemon appearing around here. Let's take a walk. Whether you're exploring a brand new park or just walking through a familiar neighborhood, augmented reality can make the real world a little more magical. In the future, we imagine a real world filled with adventures, helpful information, and of course, a lot of friends. Hey, Pikachu. Here you go. AR that's grounded in the real world, aware of us and the environment, is an incredibly powerful starting point. And it becomes even more powerful when we can share it. Someone I know is here now. Hey, Veronica. Hi, John. Do you want a battle? I don't know, Veronica. This usually doesn't end well for me, but I'm game. What's important is to never give up, even if you lose. Let's get ready. Let's go. This battle is going to take a while. Thank you, John, and thank you, Veronica. I'm so excited for our Niantic partnership. Great things happen when we commit to something bigger than ourselves. Our shared sense of collaboration, and the feeling of human connection it brings inspires me. I get inspired and motivated about opportunities where we can add our energy and capabilities to empower people and organizations around the globe to achieve their missions. And when the mission at hand has global benefit, benefit that impacts environmental understanding, conservation, and global ecology, not to mention has deep impact in education and science, I'm not only inspired by it, but also proud to be part of the journey. And it is with that pride that I like to invite Dr. Edith Weider and Dr. Vincent Pierbone to tell us their stories as they push to understand one of the least explored, most mysterious and most essential worlds we have ever known our oceans. Dr. Edith Weider is a biologist and deep sea explorer who combines expertise in oceanographic research and technological innovation with a commitment to reversing the worldwide trend 
of marine ecosystem degradation. Dr. Vincent Pierbone is a neuroscientist and researcher at Yale University. He is also vice chairman of the organization that is pushing the limits of technology and at sea research called OceanX. I became a scientist because I love exploring and being on a frontier, but I always thought it would be an intellectual frontier. If you ever get the chance, take a dive in a submersible and turn out the lights. Every dive I've ever made has been a journey into a wild and alien realm. It's a world within our world, one that we still know surprisingly little about. I mean, how is it possible that a creature as tall as a four-story building managed to elude us for so long? What a strange existence for life down here. You've seen it, Vincent. Everything looks different. The instant you pass from air into water, you see it. It's all so changed. The warm colors disappear. As you descend, it goes from blue-green to blue to smoky navy until you pass the edge of darkness around 500 meters and a new kind of light appears, living light. Seeing all that light on my first submersible dive more than three decades ago changed my life. All around me were animals flashing and glowing, a world of wonder vibrating with life and light. It was thrilling and mysterious and filled me with questions about all the strange ways light seems to function in this world. Yeah, I did my first submersible dive during an expedition to the Solomon Islands. And there we witnessed a magnificent and unforgettable nighttime display of bioluminescent flashlight fish. All of this light is a language that animals in the deep sea use to communicate in one way or the other. And we're just beginning to understand those. Some, like sea fireflies, eject champagne bubble lights to attract a mate. Others, like those flashlight fish you saw, Vince, use it in a variety of ways, including to move together in schools at night. And others use it like a trap, like the anglerfish that using a glowing lure to attract its food, a bioluminescent bobble that dangles in front of its hidden maw. And so we wondered, could we use the same anglerfish approach to draw in the elusive giant squid? Is there a light signal that might convince the giant squid to make an appearance? It was on Ocean X's Aleutia, operating off Japan in 2012, that we tried just this. Our electronic jellyfish lure worked its greatest magic, attracting the most famous squid of all, the legendary giant squid. No science fiction writer could concoct a more fantastic alien. Eight muscular arms plus two insanely long tentacles, all growing out of a massive cone-shaped head, a parrot-like beak that can rip flesh, a jet propulsion system that works equally well in forward or reverse, and gargantuan eyes bigger than those of any other animal on Earth. I think those amazing eyes are the reason we had never managed to film a giant squid in its deep sea world. We were scaring them away with all our bright lights and noisy thrusters on submersibles and remote operated vehicles. It's the process of applying new technology and new ways of exploring that enables us to make these new incredible discoveries. Yeah, and, and now more than ever, the importance of these discoveries are front and center in our changing world. OceanX was born out of this remarkable passion and excitement to explore the unknown. Over the past three years, we've designed and built a massive, brand new, one-of-a-kind research ship called Ocean Explorer, with the mission to take ocean exploration to the next level. We gathered oceanographers, marine scientists, filmmakers from all over the world to help us build the ultimate research and exploration ship. Every aspect of the vessel design was thought out to maximize ocean science and media production. From planning expeditions, to gathering and cataloging samples, to genetic sequencing, we can do it all without having to go back to shore. We have submersibles, deep sea robots, a helicopter, and multiple wet and dry laboratories. With our world-class crew, Ocean Explorer enables us to conduct multiple research projects at the same time. And these tools are a dream for scientists like Vincent and myself. Ocean Explorer is basically a state-of-the-art, complete 
research laboratory in almost a full living floating city. It's, and we've developed a brand new part of our ship that we call Hololab. In the Hololab, we bring this data together to visualize and analyze in three-dimensional space. This allows us to understand all of the rich multi-dimensional data in a natural, intuitive way. Before we were limited to 2D screens and the data was mostly in charts and tables, while humans are sort of inherently respond best to a three-dimensional world. Now we can see the data mapped onto the actual ocean floor and divine how it relates to the underwater canyons and mountain ranges. I, I can't tell you how valuable it is to see data in the context of the 3D environment. And it isn't just visualizing information. This is collaborative scientific tool that uses Microsoft Mesh to connect Hololab with scientists in submersibles on the ship, as well as those back at land. And now with our amazing partners, National Geographic and the BBC, we are setting off to capture exploratory adventures on the ship and release them as a groundbreaking series. All of you can join us to explore and discover in the near future, so stay tuned. And as you know, Edie, one of our first stops will be again to bring us face to face to the mysterious giant squid. Ah, yes. And I remember a remark that pioneering ocean explorer and film director James Cameron once said, I would have wrapped my submersible in bacon if it would contract a giant squid. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. Hey, Alex. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for beaming me in from New Zealand. For sure. Now, this beautiful marvel of engineering behind us is the Deep Sea Challenger. Now, you co-designed and co-engineered the submersible and science platform. And with it, you became the first solo pilot in history to dive to the Challenger Deep, the deepest place on the planet about seven miles down, if I understand correctly. Yep. Now, of course, you weren't focused on first uh, adventure, but rather on advancing deep sea ocean science. Now, the submersible allowed you to sample and image in revolutionary new ways. Um, with camera systems, you also, if I understand correctly, you designed. How has technology empowered you scientifically and creatively? Look, I think almost everything I do in every single day is empowered by technology. Sometimes it's, a, it's a tools that other people have created. Sometimes it's tools that we've had to create for ourselves. So if you have a curious mind like, like I do and you want to go places and you want to physically project your body into those places, you build a, a piloted submersible and you get in it and you go and you assemble a team to do that and to see what's out there and put the pieces together and create new things where you need to. If you want to project your consciousness into a place you can't physically go, like inside the Titanic, you build a small robotic vehicle that spools a fiber optic and you fly it inside there in a, in a kind of avatar experience. So remotely operated vehicles are essentially physical avatars in the, in the physical world. And then of course all the stuff I'm doing with the avatar movies is uh, both thematically about projecting our minds into other bodies. And it's also about creating a, a VR universe around us, around our actors, and, and, and bringing that world to life in all, in all its detail. And that required whole new tool sets, and those tool sets are constantly evolving. So I would say, short of making my orange juice in the morning, there's not much I can do in a given day that doesn't involve uh, building and iterating these tool sets. That's absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for sharing. So what are your thoughts on the potential for the Hololab and your partner, OceanX, to be enabled to both enable and engage the new generation of ocean explorers through technology? Well, look, I think, it's, I think it, there are multi-levels to this, right? So we can put our researchers, our young researchers, right there on the Ocean Explorer ship into complex data sets that have been gathered by the ship, maybe gathered by the submersibles, maybe it's bathymetry and they can plan a dive, they can literally walk around the dive site before they actually go down there, or they could, they could plan uh, a, uh, an ROV dive, let's say. Let's say it's too deep for their submersibles and they're gonna go down 
with a remotely operated vehicle, they can see, well, this is canyon terrain. This is going to be difficult. We're going to have to keep the ship in a certain place so that we can see that down there and have good communications with the vehicle for tracking, that sort of thing. So a lot of planning can be done. Now you start overlaying into that data sets of animals that have been seen, uh, maybe squid schools that have been seen on sonar, that sort of thing, say, this is what we expect to see at this depth. So our researchers can plan their work. But the beauty of it is that they can bring the, the audience along with them. Now, sure, it'll be a 2D representation, but eventually what I would love is that people, when they're, when they're watching our episodes, are actually in this VR experience or some kind of augmented reality experience, and they're seeing a little more of what our researchers saw and experienced at the time. And this is all happening for real. This isn't some show piece or something that we just put on you know, as a kind of a visual effect in a science fiction movie. This is an actual tool that's being used. You know, I started using HoloLens in its, in its earlier form with Jet Propulsion Laboratory. When we were planning, uh, we were designing and, and uh, planning a mission to Europa, a lander mission to Europa, um, for real. You know, so it's, it's been a tool that's been used extensively, but now we're bringing a much bigger audience into it and a much, much vaster kind of sea of users into this great VR space that you and I know so well and, and use, but now we're making it available to everyone. That's incredible. Uh, thank you for the answer. It's absolutely inspiring to hear you speak. Last question, if I may. More than 30 years ago, on the Abyss, one of my all-time favorite movies, by the way, you developed revolutionary underwater lighting and communication systems. You created, as you talked about in your previous answer, remote observation vehicles to, Im to image inside the Titanic, for example. And then you created uh, and pioneer virtual camera systems and other breakthroughs needed to be able to shoot Avatar, which, by the way, is my daughter's all-time <laughs> favorite movie. Well, thank you for that. So basically, you have been living in mixed reality for more than 15 years. Can you tell us a little bit how it feels to be here today with us um, as a hologram and what your dreams are for what this technology can actually enable in the future? Well, look, I could say, I could say having been in, in VR and AR spaces for the last 15 years at, at least that there are no uh, negative side effects that I can see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's it's actually it's actually a great a great way to work and to create and to co-create with other people. Um, and I think that the the sky's the limit on on these collaborative VR and AR workspaces. Uh, if I, I think your your film that you open with shows the possibilities for for medicine, for collaboration, for for industrial design, engineering, and just for fun just for the arts, just for, just for creativity. You know, we've been using it in a, in a very creative way on the, uh, the avatar, avatar productions for the last few years. The last, really, uh, we started in, in uh, 2005, so it's been, you know, coming up on 16 years. And, you know, it's, it's constantly improved to the point that it's an absolute joy to work in that space every day. Now, I use a, a physical camera that I hold in my hands. I don't use, I don't use the HoloLens, and we don't use that for the actors because we can't obscure their faces. But it's exactly the same set of principles, and you just get used to it. You get used to it, and and I I see us, in a sense, ultimately transcending our bodies, transcending our borders, transcending our cultures, and that's a great thing. We need that. We need to we need to understand that people in in Calcutta, in Moscow, in Beijing, in, in, the, in the US, in the UK, wherever. We're all, we all love and want the same things. We're all one big uh, unified team, if you will, planet team, team of seven billion. And we've got to crack the code on all these problems that are, that are existential problems that are facing us. And to do that, we've got to break down borders. We don't need walls, we need, we need this. We need this sense of collaboration. We need the sense of togetherness. And this technology can do that, can help do that. It's hard to stand in a place with somebody and share a problem with them or share a joyful moment with them and then think of them as somebody else, someplace else that, that you don't care about. Absolutely inspiring, Jim. Uh, what a great honor to have you be on stage with us today. 
Um, I'm super looking forward to being able to watch Avatar 2 whenever it comes out. So am I. Um, and I'm super, super <laughs> appreciative to see you on stage with us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Dreams can connect us. They can give our lives meaning and drive us to seek others who feel the same way. Others who, while sharing our views, offer different perspectives. They challenge us with new ways of seeing. They encourage us to explore, they deepen our understanding, and they enrich our lives. Guy La Liberté, founder of Cirque du Soleil and Luna Rouge, has enriched my life. He's given me perspective. He's become a close friend and he's a fellow dreamer. For many years now, we have been reflecting on removing barriers from society. We have been dreaming of a world where technology enhances, not limits the human experience. And it seems that technology is finally catching up, turning our shared dreams into reality. Well, hi, Guy. Nice frog hat. Where are you coming from? Hi, Alex. Well, I'm coming from the Anai World, a new social mixed reality platform that will aim to connect physical and digital experience by leveraging the power of human connections. Sounds incredible. As a creator, and as someone who has already revolutionized entertainment at least one, what is it about this medium that excites you? You know, over the years, I've received countless proposals for technology solution aim at integrating live and digital experience. But so far, none was able to represent and transmit the magic and emotion of a live performance. I believe with the new Microsoft Mesh platform, combined with 5G technology and cloud computing, we believe that today, the right creative tools are finally available and at our fingertips, allowing us to move forward and invite creative from all over the world into our lab. That sounds about right, but how do you balance the sense of togetherness that can only come from connecting with other humans, with technology and our relationship with computers, so that humans and not devices are at the center. Human connections are at the center of an eye world, as they are and should be at the center of our life. I've traveled the world and one thing is the same in every part of it. People want to interact with one another, to share and to connect. You know, Alex, I'm 61 and I've decided to be a great ancestor. Entertainment and creativity have always been my language. I'd like my legacy to be a place where all artists could share and showcase their creation, where a user could become partner and creator. I think we are in a great position to achieve this. I love that vision. But how do you make sense and how do you balance uh, this promise for a brighter future with a far more intimate and meaningful present? People need connection now more than ever, but we live in a world where people are starting to reject and no longer trust, giving away their time and data in return of free access to platforms. How do you connect artists with the community in an alternative way, based on principles of love, respect, and trust? Alex, I'm a connector. I've been working with artists and building community all my life, at Cirque and in other venture. I've connected people and brought to life amazing collective accomplishments. An eye world wants to empower artists, allowing them to develop entertainment experience that celebrate the interconnection between humans. We aim to welcome artists and creators ready to share content that can all mix reality at set user and people in physical venue simultaneously. One thing drove all my creative projects so far, emotions. An eye world is no different. And you know, I truly believe this virtual community will permit us to live human experience that might be possible to integrate in, in, in the real world. And I think this is for a better world. You know, Alex, uh, I could talk about the subject for many hours. I think it's the moment that I show you a little glimpse of what the an eye world spirit could be. Would you like to come with me a little bit? Come on.